Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be discussing about the major key takeaways from a paper called LLAME, which is a large language model released by Meta a few weeks back. So I have already gone through this paper and I have noted down few key takeaways, technical key takeaways from this paper. And I think if you are a working data science professional, especially working in a NLP domain, this video really really gonna help you. So before I get started, a quick shout out to a YouTuber called Annie, who has already gone through this paper and summarize it really really well. He talked about the openness of the uh, paper and openness of the model as well and he compares with this model with various other models as well like gpt3 and etc so let's get started so uh, in the starting of this paper i think i i really like the two aspect of this one is on the training data and the methodology i have used to pre-process the training data set and also second term is on the emphasize on the inference part so I think they concentrated on these two stuff majorly. That's what I felt after going through this paper. And also a little bit on the architecture which they have inherited from the other LLMs as well. Anyway, we'll discuss those points down the line. So coming back to the training data creation, they have explicitly mentioned multiple times in the paper that they have used only publicly available data set. And they have not used any proprietary or any kinds of private data sets as well and they have keep they keep kept on quoting that you know they are using public level of data set and others model have been using private data set or not uh, you know uh, you know public level property data set i think they mentioned explicitly that palm gpt3 are i think they are, might be using some private data set but we are using only public available data set i think they have quoted this multiple times in their paper i think for the meta this would be uh, very important i feel because we know that facebook, uh, facebook is owned by meta and they could if they want they could also use a uh, facebook chat right but they have quoted explicitly that you know they have not used this so that's a good thing from the meta side and second thing which is uh, which is interesting is on the inference part so all the nlms of the gpt uh, gpt 3.5 and all they concentrated on the budget on the training data set but what is interesting in this is they also concentrated on the budgeting of the inference as well along with the training data set so now even I think they have mentioned multiple times that you know why inference is useful and all they also done I think three to four different kinds of models depending on the inference budget anyone is having. Maybe I feel this could be the reason why after this model released both the architecture and the model weights several folks on the internet have fine tuned LLMA and make it work really well. Even the Stanford guys I think it's called Alpaca. So they have also uh, took some 52,000 data sets and fine-tuned it. All this has happened, I feel, because of the inference time which these folks have concentrated on. And if you look into the way GPT-3 or 3.5 has been trained on, it is typically a, literally a supercomputer. But the inference of the LLMA can be done using only one single GPU and it has been proven as well and they have quoted separately down the line that you know using one GPU they could able to anyone could able to infer it and that's where the model size comes into picture and second thing which I liked about is on the uh, training data creation or the cleaning part as a data scientist i have seen many folks who concentrated only on the training part you know what i think i have added this much layers or this many layers i have added like so many epochs i did this optimization that optimization so many things but what matters the most is the training data set creation as the saying goes garbage in and garbage out right so for this llma they have taken seven different sources of the data and combined together it's somewhere going to like you know 7.8 to 8 db of data and some of the data sets like wikipedia 
they have to, you know uh, run more than one epoch and some of the other sources they have gone through less than one epoch as well so this is just their choice of going through it and let's go through one by one and let's see what kind of cleaning methodology they have applied on top of each of these sources right see again i talked about this public level again they talked about you know we are using public level level data set they emphasized a lot on this anyway one of the common data sets this is uh, people are using for the llm is or slash lmc is a common crawl data set and we know that common crawl data set contains english as well as non english text so one of the uh, uh, things these people have done is you know they have uh, clean they have removed the non english text from the common crawl and they have inserted only the they have taken only the english text for that they have used one language identification model again it is from the meta and i have also personally used this library as well basically it has two kinds of models this is to given a text it will detect whether the text is english or non english and let me go to that page directly and this is a language identification model Uh, LLMA paper has used to remove the non-English sentences, and I feel this is one of the major takeaways for me as well. And this is, I think, it is having two kinds of uh, uh, model. One is a lightweight model having somewhere around nine hundred KB and one twenty plus MB. And personally, I have used both of these, and the results are really, really, really good. And if you want to make use of this model in your workflow. i think you might need to rely on something like fast text land detect which makes use of this model and predict it of course one of the drawback of this you know if your input text is one word or two word this would fail not only this any model would fail because the context should be very less like one word or two words right in english you know it could the words could be narrated from the other languages as well for a language like english so short sequence of the text will be very challenging for these models but other than this this works literally literally well i think we have tested this uh, uh uh this library very well so that is one of the key takeaway from this uh, uh you know from this cleaning methodology and coming back to the second uh cleaning part of the data they mentioned that you know they have remove the duplication in the text and again they use the language identification steps as well so that means second time also they have used the same language identification and third thing is which i locked about the uh, says you know when it come to the github they could have used any kinds of data set but they concentrated on the repository on the github where they have the mit license and the bsd's license apache bsd what does it mean means you know there are several open source several open source uh, repositories and they are using these repositories only if the license attached to the rep uh, repositories are open to use otherwise they are not using it that is point number 1 in that case i think the ethics followed by this pixel are really really nice i felt and also they have removed the uh, low quality files as i was saying just few minutes back garbage in and garbage out right so these people made show that you know the quality of the data is really nice i think again at this point i really liked it and the way they have followed it and they have followed some heuristics and rule based method to clean it or they might have used some model as well again they deduplicate it so the resulting set in the file level etc etc and this is on the common crawl and the github and c4 data set and uh, yeah and uh, fourth cleaning procedure which they have followed is a uh, removing of the hyperlinks comments and formatting let's say if you are uh, if you want to try in a roberta language model or let's say bolt language model usually people say that you know this model can understand the english language model easily so there is no question of cleaning of the data set but i feel sometimes it is essential to clean these kind of data sets as well 
for example you look at this for a model like llma which is a very big model uh they also remove the hyperlinks and comments and other things so at least it need not we need not go to the uh, stop word removal and those kind of things lemmatization step and other things but at least you know we can uh, concentrated on removing of hyperlinks and these kind of thing that would really you know help the model to improve so this is what the fourth key take take away i can say and coming back to the books i think if a book is having an overlapping of 90% with some other books they gonna remove that this is also one of the very good deduplication i think with the each of the data set as you see they have followed some other other procedure to make sure that data is clean that's what the point we should remember going forward and coming to the archives even this paper also there in the archive the one which i'm going through and they have mentioned that you know they have removed something from the section and blah blah things uh, bibliography and etc this is just on the you know cleaning of the cleaning aspect of it right and that is also i think one more cleaning you can take away and so now they also i think on the st uh, stack exchange so they again they concentrated on the high quality uh just give me one moment yeah high quality high quality questions and answers and they have applied some things to make sure that the question and answers are also high quality and also if you can see here they also removed the html tags so html tags removed and here html link sorry i think href link somewhere we have seen that right yeah remove the hyperlinks and here html tags and other things so at least i think these are the major takeaways you can do that and coming back to the tokenizers they have used a bp tokenizer as well so i believe you know to sum it up uh we have found very good language identification library right and second thing is they have done a lot of deduplication work on the data set here and and third thing is on the ethics and the uh, other uh methodology we people have followed to make sure that the training data set is good that is which uh, i think that is something we can learn so let's just go to the uh, next model and coming back to the model sizes i think these are the various sizes which you have and uh, 13 gb i think 35 i think uh, yeah we'll we'll discuss this down the lines but one of the things which you can note down is here on the learning rate so after certain point they have decreased the learning rate and for the model size they also think double the learning rate so this is one observation you can see for 32.5 billion model the learning rate have been halved but for a model having less number of weights the learning has been doubled right but and also correspond to the tokens as well but batch size remains the same so usually as and when the batch size increases we also tend to increase the learning rate right but in this case batch size remains the same but still we have reduced the uh, learning rate but and with an increase in the model size so this is one observation you can do that and also they have varied you know they kept on increasing the dimensions of the models as well and along with of course right if the number of heads increases and they are also increasing the dimensions so yep this is on the kinds of models they have and wherever we have this orange or the yellow right those are like some main point which are represented in the paper and wherever we have monotreat is in a green that is like a major takeaways even the red one is like a major major key takeaways right and coming back to the architecture these people have used they have leveraged they have leveraged the uh, methodology used by other people in the industries as well for example they have taken something from gpt3 they have taken something from palm and uh, oops they have taken something from gpt neo as well let me mark palm too right so let's see what are those and what methodology they have followed here and the usually the uh, 
we have something called normalization layer right in this paper in the llm they have used a specific normalization layer called lms rms norm which is uh, uh, which is input and we usually see the people apply this normalization to the output but they make sure that the inputs are going through this normalization layer for each of the transformers and in, as i was saying instead of normalizing the output they are normalizing the input so that is one thing and we have seen in the transformers people are using either with the relu or with jellu or something the in this paper the activation function which is being used is a swiglu it is a family of activation functions under glu so which is i think last year also the and this is a uh, i think la uh, palm is from the google even they have used the sigla as well so another key takeaway for a data scientist is you know instead of relu if you start using sigla activation function for your transformer models yes results could be better and there is a paper released on the families of activation for glu as well i think it again it's from google they mentioned that you know how swiglu uh, or glu functions using the glu activation functions helps improving the transformer models so just as an intuition i think i'll go to auto draw i have already drawn these and um, if you are using relu right activation only if it is positive then the results will be positives otherwise it will be a zero always right and if you can see here this will be zero always so which leads to a lot of dead neurons what are the dead neurons i think though the neurons are present in the neural network the output will be zero which is equal to not having those right but here same i think there is something called you know leaky relu as well i think something like this and there are so much of varieties of activation function comes into picture but one i think one of the families uh, of from the glu called swiglu which approximately equivalent to the green curve which i have drawn that means you know even though let's say the input to the activation function is let's say minus 0.01 minus 0.01 instead of equivalent to zero it will try to approximate it to some of the other values but if it is having a larger negative values as and when you go the left side and again it will be zero but when you, when you talk about the stabilization even intuitively i intu intuitively i feel that you know having making uh, this working is really helpful right and yeah that's all the second key takeaway from the architecture point of view and third key takeaway is on the positional embedding so now instead of using a absolute positional embedding or using any kind of relational position embedding they are using something called rotary embedding um in simple it's an combination of both absolute position embedding as well as relation position embedding as well so and they have also taken it from gpt neo so they have i think they have given the credit to these folks as well saying that you know this is the thing which i have taken from this so that is what we can learn as well and as always and we are you are using the adam w optimizer along with some cosine late or uh, learn uh, you know cosine learning rate schedule uh so yeah i think this is also i think you can take adam w anyway people are using and what is that i think i was also going through the adam and adam w so there is not a major difference between adam and adam w when adam was released uh there was a wrong implementation in the libraries itself so adam w is a uh, is just an improvement over adam so what the improvement is you know the library implementation in the adam was not correct in the libraries so now adam w suggested some of the suggestions using which those can be improved the regarding this there is a block on the fast ai which explains really really well between what happened to adam and adam w and all i will also attach those link in the description section and 
Yep. Coming back, I think this is also which I uh, which I liked as the third major key takeaway you can consider it as. The coming back to the efficient implementation because they initially they talked about the inference budget and uh, they ta- emphasized a lot on training budget as well. How uh, now if they are talking about this along with the optimization, having some efficient implementation also does matters a lot, right? So now regarding this, they have taken some of the, uh, you know, they have experience of building with x formers as well. So where they have, you know, uh, not storing the attention weights and not computing the vector that are masked. That means, let me uh, take some examples here. Uh, where is this? Let's say this, we know that it's a casual uh, mask language. Let's say one, two, three, four, Five, right let's say when you are processing this specific word we are allowed to uh, see the words on the previous level and also we are not uh, you know the model will never able to see the words which are at the next level right but still though we are processing uh, on the this word we are you know the what are the uh, key k uh, key uh, slash q right this q vectors anyway i will be explaining this concept in another video but we'll be you know, uh, calculating key ve- k vectors as well as the q vectors for uh, the padding tokens as well later down the line that will be ignored but if that is the case in down the line if it is getting ignored why to you know calculate it at the first place right so especially when you are uh, processing the word third word fourth and fifth word or you know we are not seeing it or the model is not seeing it in that case calculating these vectors for key and q will be like very very heavy so that's what this model has also taken into consideration and they have uh, even the x formers and that is one of the efficient way of improving the transformer performance as well right other than that if the activation function is costly and they are saving it instead of recomputing it as well for that instead of taking the pytorch again owned by meta or i think it was it used to own by meta i think now what i've done is you know they have manually implemented the back propagation here manually implemented a backward propagation which will save the expensive activations to compute i think it could be linear layers or something like this so yep i think they also done a really good work here i felt so let's go next and uh, they talked a lot on uh, the uh, of course uh, the, though the overall paper is about 27 i think most of the time they talked about their model performance with the other models which is already out there because obviously right do people have other chat gpt and the things have the model running on the supercomputer and this is on just one gpu also you can run and coming back to the training time it took roughly 21 days on 2048 800 gpus each one is having a 80 gb i think yeah this and this is for the 65 billion which is the largest of the four models meta has released so this is one thing and they yeah i think this is i think we are almost at the end and yeah i think other things are they just started comparing with you know gpt3 and palm and with various data set which is open source you know there is something called question and answering on top of that reading comprehension that is what a question and answer right how does gpt3 perform palm perform llma perform and all rest of the uh, paper is all about just comparing these things as well and they are saying that yes see here this is this model is 10x smaller but runs on a single v100 gpu during inference so yep i think these are the major k takeaways yeah just before we end it here so they also mentioned that you know uh, they have also a plan of fine tuning on the instruction data something similar to what stanford folks have also done and this is on the i think it's multi-language understanding or something so now that is regarding this and they also down the line they did mention that they do have the plan really uh, releasing of the next 
so i think that toxicity and other things but yeah uh, let me go to that specific pointer as well 248 for a period of approximately 5 months yeah overall though the training took 21 days the pre processing and other things they mentioned that it took roughly 5 months 5 months using 2048 880 gb gpus so approximation these are all again uh yep and lalan that at in a bit of funds while being the next more other they emphasize the same point again and again that's consistency across this paper and most of the other papers too and yeah see now i think they mentioned that we plan to further investigate this in the future finally we plan to release a larger models trained on larger print training corpora so i expect one more model from meta which is a big larger model and that to on the instruction based because they have mentioned indirectly that they have a plan to release that model in the wind and i'll be you know waiting for that as well but yeah i think i think i would say these are the major key takeaways you can learn from this paper i hope this helped in uh help you as a data scientist to learn some more the other aspect from this so yeah it you need not have a large model to inference still we can have a model which is lesser in size but you can also have the performance similar to the bigger models as well so yep thank you so much for watching this video